everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. We're here today to talk about the brand new EVGA ICX technology, which is a combination of uh, hardware design changes as well as cooler design changes that EVGA is releasing as of today and will be selling uh, into the foreseeable future. Now, uh, we're going to have a lot more detail on the story at PCPro.com, but I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an overview of why they did it and what the integration actually looks like. So if you remember back in November of last year, EVGA had uh, an issue where uh, they had not put thermal pads on some of the power delivery uh, portions of their graphics cards, meaning that they were overheating to the point where some people, you know, had some fears of damage or there might have been a few reports of damage. Uh, but it was definitely something that didn't look good on EVGA for doing it. Uh, now, they replaced those cards, or they sent you thermal pads, or, um, uh, you know, they offered all kinds of different fixes. I think they had a, a firmware fix that just sped up the fans a little bit so you didn't have to worry about it. Um, but EVGA had had a long-term plan to release a new technology like the one we're looking at here today, um, but they kind of accelerated it after... Uh, that thing, uh, that kind of event occurred uh, back in November. The ICX technology um, is uh, a couple of different things, right? So the most important part is that it adds sensors to the PCB, physical thermal sensors to the graphics card. Where most graphics cards today have one thermal sensor, you know, from the GPU, and in, in case of NVIDIA graphics cards, there's one GPU thermal sensor. Uh, and every uh, fan profile, every thermal design profile uh, has been built around that one thermal sensor on the graphics card. And as EVGA demonstrated when I was out at their offices last week, um, as GPU process technology and GPU design has improved, the GPU is no longer the hottest part of the graphics card. It turns out it's either the, it's the power delivery, right? And memory can be uh, really high up there too. So they integrated nine new sensors on the board. Um, one additional one on the GPU, they've got three on the memory, and then five on the power delivery itself. Plus again, the one on, uh, from NVIDIA on the GPU side. What they use those sensors for is to um, monitor temperatures at different locations and adjust fan speeds accordingly. Now you can see this is the uh, FTW2 card. This is one of their higher end models. The two fans can now spin asynchronously. Uh, the fan on the left is tied to GPU temperature. The fan on the right is tied to either your memory or your power delivery temperature. Uh, PWM temperature, depending on which one is actually higher at the time. And all this is handled through the Precision X XOC software. You actually get two new fan curves, like two, not new, but independent fan curves that you can look at. And when you look through the software, you can actually view each of those nine sensors and their current status, uh, you know, automatically or independently. You can use track them in the graphing software. You can just track them visually and look at uh, what the temperatures are actually running at. Um, so that's kind of the, the software changes that ICX offers. In terms of hardware changes, it's also a new cooler design as well. Uh, it includes a new base plate that it has more contact with more components on the on the front of the mother uh, on the front of the motherboard on the front of the video card. Uh, the the heat pipe is actually a little bit more expansive, and the fins uh, have a couple of new technologies in them. Uh, like they basically put holes through the fins in, in select locations that allow the air to kind of proliferate through. Uh, the, the fan or through the cooler itself without a whole lot of, uh, of pressure building up on it, which all should add up to lower temperatures uh, across the board as you get better airflow through all the, uh, the fans. The back plate is a little bit heavier duty. Um, both the back plate and the base plate have some uh, uh, type of, of technology that they're using to try to increase surface area, you know, pin fins, which looks like little little pins sticking out of the base plate or the back plate, uh, where space is av uh, available to do that. And all of this adds up to a better cooler in addition to having the additional thermal sensors and monitoring capability and, you know, fan curve capability uh, that the new version of Precision X offers. And then finally, they communicate all this to you, even at the hardware level, uh, through this, uh, what they call a uh, thermal, what do they call it, a thermal display up top, right, where it's the EVGA logo, uh, you get your, your branding on there, and then there is a, a G, a uh, P, and an M logo on there that have, uh, you know, uh, RGB LEDs on them. And they cycle through different color states based on the temperature um, that the, that particular component is running, the maximum, the highest temperature that one sensor is looking at. Uh, so if your GPU spikes above 83C, uh, the light will turn from green to red. Same thing for power memory. You can adjust those temperature thresholds in the software, so you can set them to 75C or 70C, whatever you want to do. Um, 
and, and so it gives you a nice kind of, if your case is windowed or you're in an open test bed, it gives you a nice visual clue as to kind of what is going on inside your GPU. Now it's interesting because this doesn't translate into higher performance for EVGA or the consumer, right? You're not, they're not running at higher clocks because of it. Uh, you may get slightly better uh, GPU boost consistency if the cooler is better, but that's not, you know, the sensors don't help that necessarily. Uh, the asynchronous fans don't necessarily help that. The display and information to the consumer don't actually uh, help that. That's just, you know, par for the course. Uh, but people are either going to get better peace of mind out of this or a little bit better knowledge as they go through kind of the extreme overclocking capabilities, right? So it's going to vary a lot depending on, on, uh, on what your use cases are for this, whether or not the added cost, which is about 30 bucks for a like-to-like -like model uh, uh, from EVGA for this, if you want to pay that extra money for that capability. The ACX3, the currently shipping cooler, for the GTX 10 series will continue to exist as well as uh, the new ICX model. Um, they're actually offering an upgrade program for people who have 1070s, 1080s, 1060s eventually uh, for the ICX cards where you can pay 99 bucks, one-time fee, you get to trade in your old card for the new one with the better cooler, better integration, new sensors. Uh, and obviously, you know, that's helps them cover, recover some of the costs they'll have to do for selling uh, your old cards as, as refurbs, I guess. Um, so, you know, overall, this is a, a good addition at an odd time for EVGA. We're kind of in the middle of uh, this generation. We're kind of, you know, the, the 10 series is well established. Uh, we expect NVIDIA will have new stuff coming in the, you know, sometime in 2017, mid to late 2017. So, you know, if you have something already, do I feel like you need to move up to the ICX type design today? No, it's perfectly acceptable for you to kind of wait for that next generation. Uh, but I would say this is the kind of design and forward looking uh, integration on graphics cards you'll probably see adopted by other add-in card vendors. You'll probably see adopted uh, by NVIDIA on their reference platforms going forward. And, the, and just in general, the idea of having one temperature sensor on the GPU that kind of controls all of the you know, cooling profiling on the system is probably a little bit outdated and EVGA is kind of proving that's to the, that's, that is the case uh, through these designs and integrations. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how these integrations translate over time, uh, but I do think it adds a lot to both somebody who, who is just maybe a technology nerd and wants to see how all of that type of stuff works and keep an eye on all those types of things without adding your own thermocouples and your own software and anything like that in the middle of it. Um, but from a, from a use standpoint, you know, really for the, for the overclockers, the enthusiasts, if, you wanna, if you're going to do LN2 cooling, I can think of no better feature than what EVGA has really offered in that. So it really depends on what your, what your mindset is going into this. Uh, so like I said, check out the full article on PCPro.com. We'll have it linked in the description here, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting in-depth technical content by contributing at patreon.com slash PCPer.